Good afternoon, YouTube, and if it looks like I'm really happy, it's because I just got a hold of Bruce Shepard's uh, video. Now, in one of my recent videos, uh, G-Man, the reply to G-Man parts one through five, I had mentioned, uh, I mean, I remember just telling about the flood, uh, about how it wasn't scientifically valid, and so Bruce Shepard, you know, replied, and we had an extremely long discourse um, and I'm inviting you guys to look at it. I'm going to try and post a link to it, and then I'm going to probably host the image of it uh, also. Um, but in our debate, or, well, you know, I was actually, admit I actually learned a lot of new things. Um, Bruce Shepard actually taught me uh, a thing or two. Uh, I admit, I even admitted in the uh, discussion. And he you know, basically encouraged me to... Uh, look up new stuff and you know understanding and by my doing that well let's watch the video the atheist chef listen i'm not going to discuss with this with you any further because now you're being ridiculous now you're special pleading you don't believe the earth was flooded at all there wasn't a mass flood even though you have all of these cultures that verify this in their history that say hey we this is a part of our history it's part of our cultural history hey there's this story of people that got on this boat with a bunch of animals that survived this great flood there are many cultures why don't you freaking google them now for those of you that have seen that and go well how is you know isn't the christian that you know that normally gets accused of special pleading now, special pleading does have a, um, it, it kind of goes both ways. So I'll, I'll give out the definition. Uh, special pleading, also known as stacking the deck, ignoring the counter evidence, slanting, and one-sided assessment, is a form of spurious argument where a position in a dispute introduces favorable details or excludes unfavorable details by alleging a need to apply additional considerations without proper criticism of these considerations. Uh, well, to get, get past all the fancy wordiness there, basically, you know, us as atheists tend to say that Christians, you know, they're introducing all these new evidence, you know, they're the ones special pleading. Uh, Bruce Shepard here is accusing me of ignoring the counter evidence. And by the evidence, at least for his example, for this part, he means the evidence of uh, the other cultures, uh, that all of these ancient cultures, they have, um, you know, a flood story, um, because as you know, the basis of the conversation was about a global flood, um, and and I'm assuming by this argument, um, he you know as far as you know the fact that there are many cultures that have you know stories for a flood, obviously that means that there is a flood. Now, I may have done a poor job of you know maybe. Uh, addressing that I you know I don't know um, I'm going to address my points and then if I fail to do so in the uh, video I'm gonna look over my notes right now and then I'm gonna address them here and maybe I can you know make up for uh, you know special pleading not to mention what you're doing is you're using the epic of Gilgamesh as an argument against the earth flooding at all, which you don't even believe in, you don't believe in the story of Noah, you don't believe in the earth flooding at all, but you're using an argument that you don't even believe in as an argument against the other person. Dude, that's special pleading. Come on, you're using one argument that you don't even accept or believe in to refute an argument that you don't accept and believe in. What are you, mentally retarded? Okay, so we've been discussing about cultures and societies that all you know believe that there was some kind of a global flood and if that's the case then there's a good possibility that it happened my argument is so what so what if they all had a flood story that doesn't mean the likelihood of a global flood there are possible alternatives for that first being that the uh, the certain societies and cultures had a very catastrophic but local flood, and being as they were just one small society, or whatever they probably perceived it as a global flood, or two, 
they took it, they borrowed from another uh, religion uh, for a global flood. Because as you can see, uh, throughout history, you know, particularly you start off with the Jewish, uh, you know, the Jewish history, they took and borrowed elements uh, from other people, such as the Babylonians for the Enuma Elish. You can see that in the uh, in the Genesis creation story, uh, and then the flood itself, the the biblical flood has elements that we see in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which happened way earlier. It was recorded 400 years earlier. Uh, you know, so what my point of bringing up the Epic of Gilgamesh there, Bruce, was saying that, you know, there are stories that have happened. There are people that are making these claims and people can pass these down. And then when there becomes this you know, intermingling of uh, religions and countries and so cultures and societies, they tend to mix those, uh, those stories together. It happens. That's just how it is. But it doesn't mean that it's true. Now, if we look back at the, uh, you know, at different things that cultures and societies have believed over the years uh, to be true, that obviously aren't, you know, for example, the earth is not flat. Many cultures and societies were telling people that the earth was flat. Uh, many cultures and societies also said that gods were responsible for the things like the weather and the harvest and all of that stuff. They all believe that. They may have even believed in different gods, but they all believe that gods were responsible for that. But science comes along and says, ah, no, that's not how it works. Now, Bruce, you are a biblical creationist. You are proposing a biblical creation and a biblical flood. Now, as such, the Bible, uh, according to Answers in Genesis and a couple of other Christian websites, um, you know, according to the genealogy of Adam, all the way down to Noah, and you know, they, they've decided or shown that it's most likely that the flood happened around 24... 100 BC. Um, now, the, a lot of these scientific things that you brought up to me, um, you know, including the hydroplate theory, uh, the ice comet, um, you know, those two things, you said they occurred around the 5,000 mark. Not, not to mention also the trees that you brought up are about 5,000 years old. So, and that, that was the oldest trees, other than the clonal trees, but that's another discussion, and people will see that in our chat. Now, so you said that was the 5,000 mark, 5,000, uh, you know, years ago, so around, you know, uh, 3,000 BC, which is your, what you're arguing here, uh, when the flood happened. What I brought up, the Epic of Gilgamesh, was to show that the Epic of Gilgamesh was written uh, 400 years sooner. So if the Bible was, you know, saying that the flood happened at 2400, the Epic of Gilgamesh was written at 2800 BC, which means that the Epic of Gilgamesh would be closer to that, to the Bible, to the flood date, that date that you're talking about, than the, what the uh, Bible says that the flood happened. Um, so if you believe the Bible, then these estimates of 5,000 years for the trees and all this stuff is about 500 years off. The Epic of Gilgamesh is about 200 years off. So I was trying to point out that the Epic of Gilgamesh is closer. So I was saying that in a matter of trying to be clever was why don't you believe the Epic of Gilgamesh since it's more accurate than the Bible. No, I don't believe in the Epic of Gilgamesh, but I can still use it in an argument to show you that just because there is a handwritten testimony of a flood, even if a bunch of cultures and societies believe it, doesn't mean that it is true. And that if it is true, then the Epic of Gilgamesh is more true than the Bible is. On top of it, your entire, all your posts are always laced with some kind of biased presuppositional bigotry about you uh, not accepting anything from a religious source. But you use something from a religious source to argue from. 
You're a fucking retard. Dude, I'm done with you. That's enough. So Bruce, in the same breath, tells me that I have a bias towards anything with a religious source, but I managed to use a religious source to refute him. So how is that bias? But now let me explain what happened. Uh, he's, he proposed, and you can see this in the uh, writing uh, if you look it up. Um, he proposed that in the Black Sea, there was a doctor, I think it was, oh, I can't think of his name now. But he proposed that in the Black Sea, there was a catastrophic flood. And even when I first read this, I just took this as saying that it was a catastrophic local flood. But it really had no, you know, anything about a, a global flood. This, it helped his argument about that the um, cultures, you know, back then could have experienced a flood. But I, that had nothing to do with the global flood. And that's, you know... That's another. That's neither here nor there. But I went out and researched about that. And one of the first few things that I found out about the Black Sea Flood uh, came from a creationist website. The creationist website talked about how they were originally in support of this, doc, or this guy's um, decision you know, to do this because it, 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 you know, it helps their case. However, the same creationist website said that they, the scientists have gone out and researched it and found the conclusions to be false. That it was actually almost the opposite of what the doctor that proposed it, you know, he had said it was going to happen. This was a creationist website telling creationists that this was a bad argument. So, of course, I felt a kind of a need to use that. You know, when a creationist, you know, used science properly, they were able to prove science works. But, apparently, that's bias. On top of it, your entire, all your posts are always laced with some kind of biased, presuppositional bigotry. Biased, presuppositional bigotry. Now, when you go to that page and you read things that me and Bruce said the entire discussion, I would have to think that you will agree that I was being anything but. Um, especially toward the end, uh, when he started introducing me to things that I'd never heard of, such as the hydroplate theory and the ice comet theory, um, I admitted that I had never heard of those things before. Those were brand new to me, and I and I detail what exact pretty much what I did. I went out and you know went to the I think Walter Brown or Walt Brown was the guy that promoted uh, the hydro plate theory. I looked at his words. I uh, saw the videos that actually explained and showed an image of what actually was happening and what he was arguing was the case. I um, researched you know all of their points they were trying to make. Because as a, as a layman, I didn't really know. And from the video, it's kind of convincing. It actually, it, you know, if you don't know anything about science or geology or anything, it actually makes sense. But I said, well, there are some things in there that I don't quite understand and some things that don't quite make sense. So I went out and researched, and I did a little bit of research on geology and all of these different things that, um, you know, you know, trying to kind of fresh up, you know, what I had learned, but it didn't make sense. There were a lot of bits and pieces and things that weren't accounted for. And it, it, so I was having this nagging suspicion that there was obviously something wrong. So I went out and looked for those things that were wrong. So I then found talkorigins.org, their arguments for it, which and actually it only covered a small bit of it, but it wasn't enough. It covered a few things. Um, and then I found, you know, of course, Thunderfoot. Thunderfoot is fantastic. Um, he covered, and then I also found um, I think her name was Wildwood Claire, and I'm, I'm going to post her link down below. Uh, she's a geologist, um, and she posted a YouTube video about it. And those three things together pretty much affirmed the things you know that I didn't know, um, and, and used actual science. And then the same thing with the ice comet theory. I, you know, there was a lot of problems with that because. 
Um, you know, specifically, Bruce, um, because if you believe in the ice comet theory, that actually kind of flies in the face of the hydroplate theory, which you tried to argue with me, uh, existed, or happened, I should say, and it totally deals away with the Bible. You know, the Bible's claims that the fountains of the great deep and rain were where we got the floods from, but the ice comet theory basically says a comet came down, hit the water, and the water caused a giant flood. You are a creationist, so, you know, I, the first things I, I thought of was, well, that kind of does away with any of the biblical claims. Um, it talks about the possibility of a flood, a catastrophic flood, but of course, Talk Origins then came in and said, you know, basically show that if the, the meteor had come down at that size, that magnitude of 30 kilometers wide, which is like 19 kilometer, or miles wide, and hit the water, there would have been way more drastic effects and we pretty much have been screwed. But that's not the point. The point was this. I didn't know these things, but I went out and looked at it. I researched it. I researched all of their claims, everything that they were trying to tell me happened. And then I researched the implications for those things. If that is being biased and presuppositional and bigoted, then I then then you win. I am a biased presuppositional bigot. But there I, I then everybody is because I gave it its due diligence and researched it and studied. I found arguments to the other side and then I was simply was unconvinced. But if you're going to claim that I am, then you are more of a biased bigot than I am. You came up onto my channel and just spouted off answers in Genesis stuff because of what I had said. You barely gave anything personal. Uh, and then as I continued, I read every bit of your articles and the video, well, actually you didn't send me any videos, but the links that you had sent me and I addressed each point, either with a fully personal interpretation of what's going on or explaining how that doesn't actually help a biblical claim. It does actually does doesn't help much all such as the whole thing with the cultures and society in the in the in the flood or each scientific bit that i didn't fully understand the science i gave you the the implications of what could be wrong about that and then i gave you the talk origins and thunderfoot and stuff like that to uh refute it and every time every time bruce uh you, you know you moved on to something else and so, as I said several times, I said, if you're not telling me anything, if you're not refuting it, then I, that must mean that you concede to those points. But I don't know. Um, but you did not come up with a rebuttal. You did not come up with anything to, to challenge what I had said. You didn't come up with a counter-argument paper that a creationist had said. You just moved on. So if you want to accuse me of being biased, then you need to give me more stuff to work with because I gave, I took what you gave me, I worked with it, and I am not convinced by that. So come up with a counter argument or shut up. By, if you're going to tell me that I'm biased, you need to work a little bit harder. But as we went along, it was the same thing. You just kept posting more and more of the same crap. And I listened to everything and I answered every one of those things. But you just kept copy pasting from more answers in Genesis and every one of them I answered. Every one of them was refuted. Every last fucking one of them. But now you're going to make this video because I'm assuming it's because you're out of things to argue. So I'm going to say to you here, as I did in the text, just because I disagree with you and that your evidence does not convince me, it does not make me a bigot or biased or presuppositional. So, um, for example, you know, anybody that uh, knows about the Native Americans and how they do a rain dance, um, and they have a correlation between, um, 
you know, when they actually did a specific dance and then the next day or that night or sometime soon rain came and they gave and they said, oh, wow, look at that. We danced and it rained. And if you were to go up to a, a Native American and they said, um, you know, no, no, by the way, guys, that's, that's not how it works. See, we have weather patterns and we can predict when rain, the, you know, all this different stuff. You can go up to them and explain to them what it is. Then, you know, that Native American has just as much of a right to say, well, why are you being so biased and presuppositional? I mean, obviously we dance and the rain came. You know, why don't you believe us? That's all the evidence. That's the evidence right there. Look, we're going to dance and the next day it's going to rain. If that's presuppositional bias bigotry, you know, showing where science, you know, kind of disproves these weird claims that are unscientific, then fine. Presuppositional biased bigot right here. But so are you. And more so, in fact, um, I noticed that in our debates or discussions or whatever you would have it called, it seemed like you weren't really listening to what I said, but took certain keywords and just went on from there. Uh, most of the paragraphs were really impersonal and just copy pasted from Answers in Genesis or something else. Um, and so I wanted to test that theory. And if you'll notice toward the very end um, of the last you know, chapter or last part, the last reply that I did, one of the last paragraphs, I started injecting the word penis, like in every other line. And then one line I put, I put penis in here to see if you would actually spot it. And then I put a little bit later more penises in that. I also put, if you do recognize this, please, you know, reply to me and let me know that you actually see this. But you didn't. Now, of course, you went and made the video instead of replying in chat. So I really don't know if you really did and just didn't feel like talking about it. Um, but, so I wish I'd said that earlier. But to claim that I am, you know, presuppositional, biased, bigot, and you're not, um, especially when y you gave me the evidence, you gave me what, and then I put the counter evidence and I put the, uh, the logical uh counterparts to it that are explaining why this wouldn't work or why it doesn't make sense or the problems that this scientific theory has and then the real scientific evidence from people much smarter than me and you still want to be a creationist you know if you continue to use those same claims then absolutely you're more biased now if you move on to something else kudos and I'm, I'm glad i could help you get rid of all these bad arguments and you know bad science so i hope you did i hope you learned something because i sure did but if you continue to use it yeah <laughs> you're, it's the pot calling the kettle black overall i'm really glad this conversation happened um, i actually was able to learn a lot of things of course it pretty much took up my whole weekend but that's the price you pay for knowledge sometimes um but, so I hope that this video and this conversation that's actually going to be seen on my stuff, on my page, um, helps people, gives them a better understanding of the creationist argument. Um, so Bruce did a good job of laying out what the creationist argument is, and I feel like I've done a good job of explaining, you know, the, the counter arguments. Um, so check them out. Get a feel for yourself what it was. Let me know if I did anything wrong, said anything wrong. Am I really being presuppositionally biased and uh, bigoted? You know, did I come off that way? Please let me know. Tell me where I went wrong. Tell me what I got right. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that it's 25 minutes long. Only I could turn a video from that was a minute and 40 into 24 minutes and 40 seconds or so. But... I had to address it. I had been meaning to make a video about this, but I didn't know how to go about it. But Bruce here fired the first shot, so what the fuck? Let's go. Let's do it, right? So thank you guys so much. Have a good night, and I'm going to continue to work on my next videos really soon. Oop, that was, that was gas right there. That was gassy. Anyways, peace. Bye. Good afternoon, YouTube, and if it looks like I'm really happy, it's because I just got a hold of Bruce Shepard's 
uh, video. Now, in one of my recent videos, uh, G Man, the reply to G Man parts one through five, I had mentioned, uh, I mean, I remember just something about the flood, uh, about how it wasn't scientifically valid. And so Bruce Shepard, you know, replied. And we had an extremely long discourse. Um, and I'm inviting you guys to look at it. I'm going to try and post a link to it. And then I'm going to probably host the image of it uh, also. Um, but in our debate, or, well, you know, the fact that there are many cultures that have, you know, stories for a flood, obviously that means that there is a flood. Now, I may have done a poor job of, you know, maybe uh, addressing that. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to address my points and then if I fail to do so in the uh, video, I'm going to look over my notes right now, and then I'm going to address them here, and maybe I can, you know, make up for, uh, you know, special pleading. Not to mention, what you're doing is, you're using the Epic of Gilgamesh. I was actually, admit I actually learned a lot of new things. Um, Bruce Shepard actually taught me uh, a thing or two. Uh, I admit, I even admitted in the uh, discussion, and he in he you know, basically encouraged me to uh, look up new stuff and, you know, understanding. And by my doing that, well, let's watch the video. The atheist chef, listen, I'm not going to discuss with this with you any further because now you're being ridiculous. Now you're special pleading. You don't believe the earth was flooded at all. There wasn't a mass flood. Even though you have all these cultures that verify this in their history that say, hey, we, this is a part of our history. It's part of our cultural history. ...without proper criticism of these considerations. Uh, well, to get, get past all the fancy wordiness there, basically, you know, us as atheists tend to say that Christians, you know, they're introducing all these new evidence. You know, they're the ones special pleading. Uh, Bruce Shepard here is accusing me of ignoring the counter evidence and by the evidence at least for his example for this part he means the evidence of uh, the other cultures uh, that all of these ancient cultures they have um, you know a, a flood story um, because as you know the basis of the conversation was about a global flood um, and, and I'm assuming by this argument um, he you know as far as you know three eight there is this story of people they got on this boat with a bunch of animals that survived this great flood. There are many cultures. Why don't you freaking Google them? Now, for those of you that have seen that and go, well, how is, you know, isn't it the Christian that, you know, that normally gets accused of special pleading? Now, special pleading does have a, um, it, it kind of goes both ways. So I'll, I'll give out the definition. Uh, special pleading, also known as stacking the deck, ignoring the counter evidence, slanting, and one-sided assessment is a form of spurious argument where a position in a dispute introduces favorable details or excludes unfavorable details by alleging a need to apply additional consideration.